Hello and welcome to the final report from the World Championships here in Thailand where we've had the most unbelievable A mains for the 110th Touring Car World Championships. And it started completely unexpectedly in the first leg. I'm here with uh, Oshin O'Brien, of course, Scotty Ernst. Oshin, it was a complete upset in leg one. Well, it started off on the first lap as, as we expected with Harry leading from Reinhardt and the two of them going hard at it. Unfortunately, Reinhard caught the back of uh, Hara, and that let Masami through. And Masami was kind of written off after Friday. He was quick Friday, and then he was written off. But he never gave up hope, and he went on to win it. So it was a big shock, and the two guys only finished fourth and fifth. And the rest of the podium was quite surprising as well, wasn't it? Yeah, we saw two very good drivers from Europe. We saw Ronald Volker uh, fight off the intense pressure from Elliot Harper, who's probably the star of this event, you know, only 15 years age, of age. I'd say in the future he's going to be a world champion, no doubt. Well, let's have a word from the uh, previous or ex-world champion in many, many disciplines who's hoping to, uh, to make it the first time here in touring cars. Let's hear from Masami. Kyle was a very easy drive and uh, uh, my constant rate, very good and not uh, very aggressive. So, easy drive. So, last hit was very, very lucky. That's it. <laughs> Do you think you can overtake the other cars if there is not a crash? I don't think so. Very hard. But uh, if I have a chance, I go. Like a start. <laughs> yeah. It was a remarkable second leg because Hara got out ahead and then just eased away. We, you know, all previously we'd seen Mark being on the pace, or actually slightly quicker probably, but having traffic problems. But it, I thought he was gone, wasn't he? He was, and I talked to him afterwards during a, during a bit of a break we had, and I asked him uh, if he changed anything on his car or did do anything different. He, uh, he said he changed just a little bit, uh, but his car has always been better in the heat, and it, that was kind of his plan going in. He said it was better in the heat, and he knew 2.30 is when we were going to run the final leg, and uh, his plan was to, to be better for the, the afternoon sessions, and uh, there you can see in, in leg two it was just perfect, uh, just checked out. Yeah, that was the feedback we got from Hara as well. But we also talked to Mark Reinhardt, who was remarkably downbeat. I will try in the last main, maybe just to save my second place, to get the second at the World Championship, or we'll try hard to, yeah, maybe to attack him a little bit, to finish first, but we will see. Second, no, second, second place is first loser, Mark. You're a world champion. You have to go for it. Exactly, but if I, if I try to overtake him and I crash and uh, someone else passes me, then I may be fourth or third or whatever. So better to be second, and we will see. So it's all set up for a fantastic third leg, but what we got, I think, was beyond expectations. Um, sitting up there, directing the, the race, we followed the same two cars for four minutes. No shit, have you ever seen anything like it? I have to say, it was just, I didn't expect that one at all. I mean, I knew the two guys were going to go at it, but Mark had almost admitted defeat after the second leg, and then he really put it to Hara, and then, yeah, Hara made a mistake. Unbelievable. You couldn't have written, written it in a better movie. When we got up on the, up, up, up at the end of the race, and of course, Hara's paid, really overpaid for one mistake, hasn't he? Because he's ended up... He is, you know, the mistake he had was, was kind of after the fact that Mark put on arguably one of the best passes in the history of touring car racing. Um, there was enough room for a car, and he was on the paint, and I think on the curbing, and it was just an absolute perfect. I mean, didn't push him out of the way, nothing. Just a, a textbook move, and perfect. And then Hart trying to catch up, just uh, caught the curbing, and he dropped way back, and, and that was the unfortunate side. But uh, the benefit of Mark, given the last couple laps, he could just ease it around, and, uh, and then a big surprise, everybody waiting to find out what the points were. That's right, big surprise. But the upshot what it was, we all sit there going, who, no, uh, fastest time, right. was we have our first ever double champion. Who is? That's correct, Mark Reinhardt. Um, just, uh, just, uh, it was a surprise to everybody because it all came down to the points, where they finished and stuff like that. So we had to make sure all the rules were right and we had all the points. And uh, Mark Reinhardt, he was the uh, champion. And uh, I would like to point out that I tipped him on our first day. And uh, a really great result for Germany as well as far as the run-ups concerned. Yeah, well, Ronald Volker did a fantastic job. He's been a really, you know, he was at it all week. He was always there, thereabouts, and it's a fantastic result for him. And I suppose it's a good result for Masami as well. But definitely, yeah, you have to feel sorry for Hara. He was so good all week. And uh, just to lose it like that is really tough. But it is the World Championship, so it's really tough, you know. 
It's certainly a tough mistress, lady racing. I think we've seen definitely, I would say, the best couple of races I've ever seen, and I've seen a lot now, and I'm sure you've seen even more, Scotty. <laughs> but uh, I hope you've all enjoyed the coverage we at HBI TV have been able to provide you here. And I'd like to say a big thanks to Oshin and Scotty, who've really helped us uh, with their knowledge, understanding, and rather fun personalities as well. So uh, until the next event, and you'll have to keep watching HPI TV to find out when it was, that's us for now. Thanks a lot for watching. <laughs>